Imagine taking an engine block from a road car that's racked up over 100,000 kilometers, leaving it outside to weather and, even more strangely, urinating on it. It sounds absurd, yet this so-called seasoning process is part of the legend behind BMW's Scrapyard Underdog, an engine that would become the most powerful Formula One power plant ever built. This wasn't just any engine. At its peak, the BMW M12 produced more than 1,400 horsepower in qualifying trim, according to BMW engineers, a staggering figure for a 1.5-liter four-cylinder born in the early 1960s. It dominated the sport, unsettled its rivals, and was ultimately banned for being too dangerous. But how did a forgotten road car engine transform into a record-breaking monster? BMW's decision to turn used, high-mileage M10 blocks into the heart of a Formula One contender stands out as one of the most unconventional moves in racing history. Rather than reaching for fresh castings, the engineers specifically hunted down engine blocks from road cars that had clocked more than 100,000 kilometers. The thinking was straightforward. After so many miles, any latent casting flaws would have already shown themselves, leaving only the toughest blocks behind. These seasoned blocks had survived years of heating and cooling, which naturally relieved internal stresses that could cause cracks under extreme loads. But the process didn't stop there. Once selected, these blocks were left outside to face months of rain, snow, and heat. The exposure encouraged surface rust, but this wasn't a concern. Every block would be fully machined before it saw a racetrack, stripping away any corrosion and leaving only stable metal behind. The goal was to further relax the iron's internal structure, making it even more resistant to the brutal pressures of turbocharged racing. In a sense, BMW's engineers were seasoning their engine blocks, much like preparing cast iron cookware for a lifetime of use. One part of the story that's captured imaginations is the rumor that workers urinated on the blocks during this outdoor aging. While it sounds like a joke, the tale has roots in metallurgical lore. Urine contains urea, which can, under certain conditions, act as a nitriding agent, embedding nitrogen into the surface of iron to increase hardness. But among engineers, the idea that casual urination produced any real nitriding effect is a debated legend rather than established fact. Still, the story persists, adding a layer of mystique to the M12's creation and giving a nod to old metallurgical lore where quenching in urine hardened steel, though its true impact here remains folklore. This rough and ready approach was a stark contrast to the polished high-tech image of Formula One. While rivals like Ferrari and Renault relied on new alloys and cutting-edge casting techniques, BMW's engineers bet on the proven resilience of old iron. They weren't afraid of blocks that looked battered or worn. What mattered was the internal strength, not the surface appearance. Each block was carefully inspected, machined, and then reinforced with modern upgrades, stronger pistons, new cylinder heads, and advanced fuel injection before being unleashed on the racetrack. Skepticism from outsiders was common. To many, trusting the world's most powerful racing engines to blocks that had spent years under the hoods of family cars seemed reckless. Yet the results spoke for themselves. When subjected to the immense pressures of turbo boost, sometimes exceeding 10 atmospheres, these seasoned blocks held together where many new designs would have failed. The M12's reputation for strength wasn't just a product of folklore, it was built on the real-world performance of these aged, weathered blocks. Reliability was just as important as raw power. In qualifying, the M12 could be pushed to its limits for a few laps, but in a full race, the engine had to endure lap after lap of high stress. The robustness of these old blocks helped BMW avoid the catastrophic failures that sometimes plague their competitors. While no engine is immune to braking under extreme conditions, the M12's foundation gave it an edge in both strength and endurance. BMW's approach wasn't glamorous, but it was practical and effective. The process of selecting, seasoning, and preparing each block became a defining part of the M12's legend. It was a story of resourcefulness, using what was available, trusting in proven materials, and not being afraid to embrace unconventional methods if the results justified the means. With the blocks prepared, BMW's engineers could turn their attention to extracting maximum performance. The stage was set for an engine that would not only challenge the established order in Formula One, but also push the limits of what a turbocharged four-cylinder could achieve. The next step was to see just how much power and chaos could be unleashed from this unlikely foundation. Explosive power was at the heart of BMW's M12 story. This engine, a 1.5-liter inline-four with a single turbocharger, 
didn't just compete with the best, it often outpaced the more complex V6 twin-turbo engines fielded by Ferrari and Renault. The M12's design was a study in purposeful engineering. Paul Roche and his team focused on extracting the highest possible output from a compact package, and the results were staggering. In qualifying trim, official dyno readings peaked at 1,280 horsepower, but engineers estimated the engine could reach as much as 1,400 horsepower when pushed to the absolute limit. No other Formula One engine of the era came close. What set the M12 apart wasn't just raw numbers. The engine's compact form meant it generated less friction and waste heat than its six-cylinder rivals. With fewer moving parts and a single turbo, it was lighter and more efficient, allowing for a smaller cooling system. This let Gordon Murray, Brabham's chief designer, give the BT-52 smaller radiators and a sleeker body. The result was better aerodynamics and higher straight-line speeds, especially on circuits with long, flat-out sections. While Ferrari and Renault used twin turbos to reduce lag and smooth out power delivery, BMW's choice of a single, large turbo was a deliberate trade-off, sacrificing drivability for maximum peak power. The payoff was immediate. Nelson Piquet, driving the Brabham BT-52, clinched the 1983 World Championship. It was the first time a turbocharged engine had powered a driver to the title, and it announced BMW as a force in Formula One. The M12's reputation for speed only grew. You now watch Gerhard Berger, the Austrian, in the tremendously powerful 1,350 horsepower in qualifying trim BMW-powered Benetton. In 1986, Gerhard Berger piloted a Benetton B186 to a record-breaking 352.22 kilometers per hour at Monza, the fastest speed ever recorded by a turbocharged F1 car at the time. That year, all of the top five cars through the Monza Speed Trap were BMW-powered, highlighting just how dominant the engine was on fast tracks. But this kind of power came with real challenges. The single-turbo setup, while great for outright speed, brought a notorious side effect. Turbo lag. Drivers would hit the throttle and wait, sometimes nearly two seconds before the turbo delivered its full punch. When it did, the surge was violent and abrupt, making the car hard to control, especially mid-corner. This wasn't a gentle ramp-up. Instead, drivers were hit with a sudden, overwhelming boost the instant the turbo spooled up, often catching even the most experienced racers off guard. To manage this, drivers had to apply throttle before the corner apex, anticipating when the power would finally arrive. Nelson Piquet and Gerhard Berger both described this timing game as one of the most demanding parts of taming the M12. Nelson Piquet once compared the power delivery to a light switch. Nothing, then everything all at once. This made the M12 a handful, even for the most talented drivers. Sudden bursts of torque often led to oversteer, and it took quick reflexes to keep the car pointed in the right direction. The reason for this extreme behavior came down to BMW's design philosophy. By choosing a single turbo, the engineers prioritized peak power over smoothness. The M12 could handle internal pressures up to 5.5 bar boost, a figure that dwarfed what most competitors attempted. Other teams like Ferrari and Renault opted for twin turbo setups which split the workload between two smaller turbos. This reduced lag and made the power delivery more linear, but at the cost of ultimate output. BMW's approach was less forgiving, but it allowed their cars to dominate on the fastest tracks where outright speed trumped everything else. On tracks with long straights like Monza, Imola, or Kialami, this wasn't such a big problem. Drivers could open the throttle early and let the turbo build up for maximum acceleration. But on tighter, more technical circuits, such as Monaco and Detroit, where throttle response mattered most, the lag was a real disadvantage. The delay made it almost impossible to get consistent acceleration out of slow corners, costing Brabham and other BMW-powered teams valuable time and, in some cases, races. Reliability was always in question. The M12 could deliver jaw-dropping speeds for a few laps in qualifying, but sustaining that power over a full race distance was another story. Running at maximum boost pushed every component, pistons, valves, and especially the turbocharger to their limits. Failures were frequent, and the engine's appetite for fuel meant drivers had to carefully manage consumption. It was common to see BMW-powered cars run out of fuel before the checkered flag, a risk that shaped race strategies and sometimes cost teams crucial points. During qualifying, teams would crank up the boost for a few flying laps, knowing that reliability wasn't the main concern. But in a race, engineers had to back off the boost to keep the engine alive over the full distance. 
Even then, drivers had to constantly adapt, modifying their braking points, throttle application, and even their racing lines to work around the delay. Every lap was a balance between aggression and restraint, with the ever-present risk that the engine's delayed punch would strike at the wrong moment. Despite these drawbacks, the M12 had its advantages. The engine's small size and lower cylinder count meant less heat and friction, giving designers more freedom to optimize aerodynamics. The BT-52's slim profile and efficient cooling system were direct results of the M12's compactness. While Renault focused on smoother power and Ferrari on durability, BMW's philosophy was clear. Maximize power, accept the consequences, and let the rest of the package adapt. This approach forced the competition to respond. Rivals scrambled to match BMW's straight-line speed, rethinking their own engine and car designs. The turbo era became an arms race, with teams pushing the boundaries of what was possible and what was safe. For fans, the spectacle was unmatched. Watching a BMW-powered car rocket down the straight, turbo whistling and flames spitting from the exhaust was a reminder of just how far engineers were willing to go in pursuit of speed. The M12's legacy is one of extremes, breathtaking performance, unpredictable handling, and a reputation for both brilliance and danger. Its impact went beyond lap times and championship points. It changed how teams approached engine design and set new standards for what was achievable in Formula One. Yet, for all its power, the M12 demanded as much from its drivers as it did from the engineers. The engine's wild nature created a new set of challenges in the cockpit, and taming its unpredictable bursts of power became a test of skill and nerve. Understanding what it took to drive a car powered by this engine reveals just how much of a double-edged sword explosive power could be. BMW's engineers didn't stumble into this trade-off. They knew exactly what they were doing when they chose a single turbo for maximum power, accepting the drawbacks that came with it. The result was an engine that could win races and set records, but also one that pushed drivers to the edge and sometimes beyond. This relentless pursuit of performance defined the M12 era, but it also set the stage for scrutiny from those responsible for the sport's safety and fairness. As the engine's reputation for power and risk grew, it became clear that its future in Formula One was far from secure. By the mid-1980s, the BMW M12 was at the center of Formula One's most pressing safety debate. The FIA, watching lap times drop and speeds climb, grew concerned not just about outright velocity, but about the unpredictable nature of turbocharged power. The M12's peak output, estimated by BMW engineers at up to 1,400 horsepower and qualifying trim, made it a spectacle, but also a liability. The challenge wasn't limited to handling. The ferocity of the M12's boost put enormous strain on every component. Engine failures and turbo blowouts became almost routine at maximum qualifying boost. Teams would push the engine to its ragged edge for a single flying lap, hoping it would hold together just long enough to secure a strong grid position. But what made for thrilling qualifying sessions often spelled trouble on race day. When the lights went out, reliability and fuel consumption became the new enemies. Fuel was a constant concern. The M12's thirst for gasoline was legendary. The FIA, aiming to control the escalating speeds and risks, introduced strict fuel limits, first capping total fuel loads, then restricting consumption during races. Suddenly, drivers couldn't just push flat out. They had to measure every burst of acceleration, conserving fuel to avoid running dry before the finish. The engine's high consumption often forced teams into difficult choices, chase performance and risk running out or back off and sacrifice pace. More than once, BMW-powered cars coasted to a halt, out of fuel before the checkered flag. Reliability took another hit as the FIA tightened the screws on turbo boost. In 1987, the governing body limited boost pressure to 4 bar, then ratcheted it down further to 2.5 bar for 1988. These restrictions directly targeted engines like the M12, undercutting their power advantage and making it harder for factory-backed turbo programs to justify continued development. While the M12 could still deliver impressive speed, the days of unrestrained power were over. The new rules forced teams to detune their engines, sacrificing the very trait that had made the M12 famous. Despite these changes, the dangers didn't disappear overnight. Even at reduced boost, the M12's power delivery remained abrupt and reliability never fully stabilized. Mechanical failures and dramatic exits continued to be part of the turbo era's story. The engine's unpredictability, combined with its ability to generate immense speed, kept it under constant scrutiny. 
the FIA saw that the risks, both to drivers and to the sport's image, were mounting. By the end of 1987, the decision was made. Turbocharged engines would be banned from Formula One after the 1988 season. The move wasn't about being beaten on the track. The M12, like many of its turbocharged rivals, was pushed out by a wave of regulation, not by a superior competitor. The ban was a response to the escalating arms race, the safety risks, and the realization that the sport needed to reset its boundaries. When the last race for the M12 came and went, it wasn't a defeat. It was a forced retirement. The engine left Formula One not because it had been outclassed, but because it had redefined what was possible, and in doing so had crossed a line the sport could no longer tolerate. The M12 became a symbol of an era when innovation ran ahead of regulation when pushing limits was both a virtue and a risk. Looking back, the ban didn't erase the engine's impact. If anything, it cemented the M12's place in history. Its legacy is a reminder that sometimes the most memorable achievements in motorsport come from those who refuse to settle for ordinary solutions. The story of the M12 is more than just numbers on a dyno sheet. It's about what happens when engineers, drivers, and teams chase possibility right up to the edge. That pursuit of possibility is what makes the M12 unforgettable, and it raises a question that still echoes today. What does it mean when innovation outpaces the rules? The BMW M12 stands as the most powerful Formula One engine ever raced, turbo or otherwise. Starting life as a simple streetcar engine and reaching a peak of around 1,400 horsepower in qualifying, it proved how far determined engineers could push the boundaries of what's possible. Its record-setting output and impact on the sport continue to set the standard for what an engine can achieve. If this story of BMW's wild underdog engine intrigued you, subscribe and let us know which motorsport legend you want next. There's always another chapter in racing history waiting to be explored.